Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer. Today we celebrate St. Luke the Evangelist. A reading from Psalm. The, their sound has gone out into all lands and their message to all ends of the world. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen and Alleluia. Together, let us now recite, pray together, the Jubilate. The Lord is glorious in his saints. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Lord is glorious in his saints, come let us adore him. Psalm 90 is our first appointed psalm this morning, together. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, old child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream, and we fade suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid of your rightful, wrathful indignation. Our iniquities you have set before you, and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring all our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is seventy years, perhaps in strength even eighty. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly, and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightfully fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us, Prosper the work of our hands, prosper our handiwork. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his pinions, and you shall find refuge under his wings. His faithfulness shall be a shield and a buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, of the plug that st plague that stalks in the darkness, nor of the sickness that lies waste at midday. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Your eyes have only to behold to see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. There shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. You shall trample, trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him, because he knows my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show my salvation. Psalm 92 It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High to tell of your loving kindness early in the morning and of your faithfulness in the night season. On the psaltery and on the lyre and to the melody of the harp, for you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I show, shout for joy because of the works of your hands. Lord, how great are your works, your thoughts are very deep. 
The duller does not know, nor does the fool understand, that though the wicked grow like weeds and all the workers of iniquity flourish, they flourish only to be destroyed forever, but you, O Lord, are exalted forevermore. For lo, your enemies, O Lord, lo, your enemies shall perish, and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn you have exalted like the horns of wild bulls, I am anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also gloat over my enemies, and my ears rejoice to hear the doom of the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and shall spread abroad like the cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent, that they may know and show how upright the Lord is, my rock in whom there is no fault. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. A man whose appearance was like bronze brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There water was flowing from behold the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the temple faced east. And the water was flowing down from below the altar, from below the south end of the threshold of the temple, south of the altar. Then he brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gate that faces toward the east. And the water was coming out on the south side. Going on eastward with a cord in his hand, the man measured 1,000 cubits, then led me through the water, and it was ankle deep. Again he married, measured 1,000 and led me through the water, and it was knee deep. Again he measured 1,000 and led me through the water, and it was up to the waist. Again he measured 1,000, and it was a river that I could not cross, for the water had risen. It was deep enough to swim in, a river that could not be crossed. He said to me, Mortal, have you seen this? Then he led me back along the bank of the river. As I came back, I saw on the bank of the river a great many trees on the one side and on the other. And he said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah. And when it come, comes to enter the sea, the sea of stagnant waters, the water will become fresh. Wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live, and there will be very many fish once these waters reach there. It will become fresh, and everything will live where the river goes. People will stand fishing beside the sea from Engedi to Enigleim. It will be a place for the spreading of nets. Its fish will be of a great many kinds, like the fish of the great sea. But its swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They are to be left for salt. On the banks on both sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail, but they will bear fresh fruit every month, because the water for them flows from the sanctuary. The fruit will be for food, and their leaves for healing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle is the song of Zechariah, together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Luke. Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those from the beginning who were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided, after investigating everything carefully from the very first, to write an orderly account for you, 
most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Te Deum Lodemus, you are God. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise, holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the whole holy church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, brought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Let us profess our faith in the form of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages be. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, who inspired your servant Luke the physician to set forth in the gospel the love and healing power of your Son, Graciously continue in your church this love and power to heal. To the praise and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And a collect for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the mission of the church. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name, amen. Let us now bring our own needs and intentions and intercessions before the Lord and ask for his indulgence, his mercy, and his forgiveness. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. 
Amen. Thank you for joining us for morning prayer today. We hope that you will take some time each day, each morning when you can, to join us for morning prayer. Remember, leave the world a better place this evening than you found it this morning. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.